August 1947. The sun set on the British Empire in India. India became free on August 15. She won freedom not by an armed revolution, but through a non-violent struggle. It was a great historic event, for India's freedom meant the beginning of the end of colonialism in Asia and Africa. Only five years earlier, England's wartime hero, Sir Winston Churchill, had said he had not become the King's first minister to preside over the liquidation of the British Empire. But he had underestimated the power of the Indian people. A journey's end is a journey's beginning. India had now to overcome the ravages of feudalism and colonialism. India has been known since the dawn of history. It is the only country which has lent its name to an ocean. It is a vast country, 3,000 kilometers from the snow-capped Himalayas in the north to the Indian Ocean. 3,000 kilometers again from the Arabian Sea to the eastern mountains. It is vast also in population. 340 million of 1947 are 610 million today. Modern drugs and better public health service have curbed epidemics, eradicated smallpox, cut down the death rate from 27 per thousand per year to 17 per thousand per year and added 20 years to the lifespan of every Indian. Now the population explosion is also being controlled. People are adopting family planning methods.
India has many big and old cities, but still remains essentially an agricultural country. So when India began to plan its development, it gave top priority to improving the fabric of life in its half a million villages. Farmers have now a stake in the land. Feudal landlordism has been abolished. 20 million farming families now have titles to land. The stress is on taking water to the fields by building dams and canals. Fertilizers, electricity, modern techniques of farming, new varieties of seeds, all these have helped increase the output. Food production has more than doubled. Last year it was 120 million tons. Ludhiana in the Punjab has the highest yield of wheat per hectare in the world. Not only the production of food grains, but production of all kinds of nutritive food and cash crops has increased. villages have been electrified. The aim is to give the villager the fruits of modern science where he lives and not to move him to the cities. To provide technology, not to replace hands, but to provide work for everyone.
planning for development has now become a way of life. The subsequent five-year plans sought to promote a pattern of development which would lead to a more equitable and humane society. A systematic survey and exploitation of natural resources were undertaken. The development of basic and heavy industries was taken on hand. These laid the foundation for industrialization. To take one example, steel. There were only two major units producing a little over a million tons in 1951. Today we have six steel mills with a capacity of 12 million tons of saleable steel per year. heavy earth moving equipment to build roads and dams. Bharat Heavy Electricals to manufacture generating equipment for our power plants. All these developments have increased the potential for employment so important in a country with a population problem. We have plants to manufacture fertilizers and tractors. The tradition of crafts in India is a very old one. The same traditional skill has now been transferred to modern complex technology. India has been able to build the most impressive industrial infrastructure among the developing countries.
Over 80% of all the investments in the industry is Indian. What some other countries achieved in a century, India has achieved in two and a half decades. Development on such a colossal scale would not have been possible without the vision, drive and resources of the entire nation. The public sector has made a great contribution in this achievement. India has given enormous scope to private enterprise, but it wants all economic activity to serve the larger social needs of the nation. which was a backward British colony only 30 years ago, can today design and build supersonic aircraft and space satellites. With exploration for oil being done in a big way, India is on the threshold of a spectacular development. Against the background of the global energy crisis, oil is a crucial sector for India. Only 20 years ago, India was almost entirely dependent on imports for petroleum products. Today, it produces over 40% of the total need. It is self-sufficient in the refining capacity, which has grown from a mere quarter million tons in 1950 to 27 million tons today. Also, India depended entirely on imports where sophisticated machinery was concerned. Today, it exports some of these even to developed countries. The development in India has been considerable. But much more remains to be achieved. India is a developed and a developing country. <laughs> 